how's your summer going, Oscar? Uh, it's going good, man. I've been just I just been chilling. Chilling in this hot weather, man. We must miss Baliga so much. <laughs> yeah, um, honestly, I have my fan on, right on top of me right now. <laughs> it's not yes. easy. No, it's not easy. The AC is in full blast here. Walking outside in Canada, it feels like it's you're in Saudi Arabia or something. But <laughs> hopefully, the new season will be as red hot as the summer is. Am I right? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, but let's let's start with your Barcelona first of all, because they've been grabbing all the headlines with the palancas, the levers, the so-called magic money. People are wondering where's Barcelona getting all this money from. Yeah, a lot of people are wondering how come that she, how come they were able to get this money and everything. But the thing is that Barcelona, what they're doing is that they're kind of taking a bit of a gamble by earn, by getting money now and earning less than they would normally do in the future with Barcelona Studios, for instance. Also, getting money from the Spotify deal, and they're about to do a deal for some for the shirt sleeve. I think that'll be announced tomorrow, and that will add extra income, which is what La Liga requires. You know, yeah. either reduce your wages or you get fresh income. Or you do both. Yeah, on the on the topic of wages, though, the person that's been front and center of this debate has been Frank De Jong. He's been subject to he has deferred wages from last season, if I'm correct. And yes. he's been linked with Manchester United, which he doesn't want to go to Manchester United. We all know that. Like he wants to play Champions League mm-hmm. football. But the situation about Barca asking him to take a 40 or 50% wage cut. Some people have described it as immoral. What do you think, think as a Barca fan? Do you think it is immoral? Do you think the club is wrong in asking him to take a wage cut? Mm-hmm. I think the club is wrong to ask anyone to earn less than they agreed to earn. If the player is fine with it, that's all well and good. But still, I think it's wrong to ask, and you should try and you know, you, you should you shouldn't like pin all the attention on the player. Like, oh, this person has to take their wage cut and let the media know, and you shouldn't like make them say, oh, I love the club so much, therefore I'm going to do this. I don't think that's particularly fair. Yeah, because I think that's been the main issue with the De Jong story, because personally, I feel like if, let's say, you go to play privately, you offer the player a new contract, and you're like, okay, this is our new structure, this is how things are going to be, and if you can help us, like, and you want to stay, like, we need you to help us, otherwise, like, we might need to sell you. And I think if you tell that player that in private, I don't think that's bad, but it's just the way it's played out in public. Maybe that's where that strategy becomes, let's say, moral. Because if you take a look at Atletico Madrid, for example, Tama Lamar took a 50% pay cut to allow them to register players. And it's seen in a different light compared to what's happening with Barcelona, for example. Even with the Palanca, the levers, People are saying, oh, like, why are Barcelona allowed to do that? I heard a French journalist speak about Barcelona doing that. It's like, UEFA chap, look at it. And I'm like, this is somewhat hypocritical, right? Because, first of all, La Liga has done that itself in leveraging some of the TV rights today. Um, I'm sorry, leveraging future TV income for money today. They've done that, La Liga. Liga has done that recently with Paris Mm -hmm. Saint-Germain getting 200 million from a similar deal with CBC. So I don't necessarily think what Barcelona is doing is like illegal or in that case. But I do find, let's say, if you're if you're going to do this with a player, you have to do it in private, right? Because the Lamar situation is like, you're yeah. saying Lamar is a hero, right? Yeah. But we didn't know Lamar did that until that's all. after. Yeah. And maybe that's where Laporta has sort of like got things wrong. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly there. Lamar, we knew it after the fact, but in Barcelona, you know, we know the long and short of almost everything that happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't think it's for me. Like now, I believe that if you ask Piquet or Busquets, they'd happily do it because they love the club and everything, but do it with respect and ask them privately if you're going to ask them like Atletico did. 
and speaking of Barcelona, at this point last season, right, I was like, this Barcelona squad is the worst squad I've seen since I've been watching football. That changed a lot in the winter, but in the summer, it's it's crazy. It's almost like they have a super team right now. Did you expect <laughs> Barcelona to have the summer that they had been with the players that it brought in? Not at all. I thought I thought we could at most be bringing in like no, it's like normal players that are good with potential from maybe clubs that you know need to sell them. But I didn't think we'd go and get players that everyone is competing for. Chelsea fans must be sure that <laughs> this is Barcelona. <laughs> uh, and wow, because at first when I heard Barcelona were linked with Lewandowski with Kunde, I was like. Barca fans are really good, but there's no way they're going to get the players. But boy, have I been proved wrong. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it was like with everything, everyone, everyone was like, there was this one Barcelona joined Gerard Romero that was always saying things are happening, like it's going to happen. I was like, nah, there's no way. And then all of a sudden it happens. I'm like, True. okay. I was like, with the Rafinha, I was like, okay, one is okay. Then Lewandowski happened, and then I'm like, okay. You remember, we two of us had a conversation when we had like Kunde to Chelsea was done, and I was like, okay, you know what? That's all fine and good. But then all of a sudden, we won that race too. <laughs> and and then everyone is not talking about because, you know, some pages, they like to post things without any context that, oh, Barcelona cannot register their players and whatnot. I'm like, it's going to shock you when they do that again, even though that really isn't too much of a problem. If Barcelona shift wages and everything, yeah, let's talk about the registration because, mm-hmm. according to like reputable sources, they are saying that La Liga has at the moment denied Barcelona from registering players. Yeah, uh, is that something you're worried about? Uh, I was worried at first, but then I read and read and read a lot of different things about it. So basically, what happens is that the first two levers Barcelona activated, they they, they like they sold them Barca Studios to Sixth Street, but then they also added their own money into it, yeah. and that's why there's like a disparity of 150 million euros there are thereabouts in both Barcelona and La Liga La Liga's accounts. So La Liga is like, okay, we're not counting this part of what you did, therefore you can't register everyone yet. So you know, just do your homework, but you're still like on the right track. Teb has said that before. Yeah. And the latest thing I heard, it may or may not be true as with NT on the internet, but basically they're saying that Barcelona is just a little bit, they need more. I saw a figure of 20 something million needs to be, needs to be, needs, is needed to balance the books. Yeah. A reliable journalist from ESPN was like, um, it's not like Barcelona can't register any of them now. Like that's not the case. They just want to do everyone at the same time to avoid the problem from registering one person before the other. Yeah, speaking about registration, right? Let's take a look at the global picture. Do you think this is an issue for La Liga in general? Because the financial fair play is so stringent that clubs are forced to do unconventional things to register players. Like better still, so gonna have their own levers. Uh, Valencia are going to sell Gonzalo Guedes in a couple of hours. Is that an issue? Do you think Lali Guedes to be laxer with their financial fair play regulations? I'm not really the best financial guru to ask. <laughs> so I don't know if like letting clubs be lax now is actually going to be good for them in the long term. Yeah. But I do agree that having La Liga like take this seriously as compared to other leagues you know, makes it seem as if, in the present at least, that clubs are falling behind in, st- in terms of recruitment and everything. And I want to add one more thing. I don't like how the media always is like, Barcelona can't register players. I'm like, it's not just, I mean, Barcelona's case is special, yeah. but it's a club wide thing. Everyone has to do their own homework. So it's not just one person, you know? Yeah. Everyone has to do, yeah. Yeah, like if you. Know- Oh, I, I was going to say, if I looked at the La Liga website, and there's a tab there that shows transfers. If you check the transfers, I'm 
counted not more than nine clubs that have submitted their transfers and they've been approved by the league. You can even tell, right? Like only Espanyol did a lot of their business early in the window, but it's only like yesterday that the La Liga Instagram page acknowledged that they've done business. <laughs> Yeah, but, and yeah. It, it's funny because even with the Lewandowski thing, I just feel like maybe on Thursday and Friday, there's going to be like scripting a lot of this PowerPoint together to put Lewandowski and Benzema to yeah. celebrate the start of La Liga and everything. Yeah, there, there'll yeah. be a lot of that if we can yeah. do what needs to be done by then. Yeah, I do have an opinion on that, right? In that <laughs> I feel maybe the league, they're being, because of COVID, because COVID <laughs> is a special scenario, right? No one could have yeah. foreseen that. And a lot of the losses are due to COVID. I would say maybe the league could have been a bit lax with it because of that specific scenario. But I find a lot of people who criticize the financial fair play done by La Liga, it's like they don't remember what it used to be like in the 2010s or late 2009s yeah. when clubs, it's not that they couldn't register players. They, they needed to sell players to survive. Yeah. They would sell players to... Like people are complaining now, like, oh, these players are going to England and stuff like that. Those self players to like lower mid table Italian teams, lower mid table French teams, mm-hmm. and they'll buy like players from Greece, from Cyprus. And right now, the league isn't saying you can't, you have to sell your players. They're saying you can't really sign players until you balance the book. So yeah. if you don't, if you like, if you're not going to sign players, you can keep the players that you have, which I don't think is a bad thing. Yeah. You get your house in order. And we don't have to go to that place in, Spanish football where teams are struggling to pay their players, they're struggling to pay the tax man, they're struggling to pay the bank. Yeah. There are rumors that they might go out of business because, like, for example, you look at Betis, like, they could have been, they disappeared pretty much in the 20, <laughs> early, late 20, early 2010s. But now they're in a stronger financial position because of what the league has done from this FFP. And yeah. now it's being tested, but I- I'm okay with it, to be honest. I feel eventually yeah. wages will go down and it will yeah. get to a sensible place where clubs yeah. can sign again in the future. Yeah. I feel like for us, at least, um, you can say what you want about the current regime, but at least they've tried to reduce the wages and the debt and everything. So yeah. I believe it will get to the point where, you know, our player wages will be, you can look at them and not go crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, so. also said that it's 160 million euros difference between Barcelona and Real Madrid between Barcelona and Real Madrid, like Barca have 160 more in the wage mass, which is incredible. Yeah, so that and, needs to go now. Yeah, and one of the funny things with this transfer window is that Barca have brought in all these players, and at the moment, they've only spent, I believe, eight more million than what they did to bring in Felipe Coutinho. <laughs> which is insane. Uh, that's... We spent... 600 and something million or is it 400 and something? I don't know. We spent a stupid amount of money on a stupid amount of players that did not succeed at the club. So, yeah. yeah. But yeah. that being said, we've, si- we've signed the players and that's all well and good. But the issue with the gamble we've made is that we need to deliver on the pitch as soon as possible. Yeah, you know? under a lot yeah winning league titles, going really far in the UCL, Winning the cup, you know. Yeah. Yeah, the lack of European success is, has really like bit into Barcelona's depth figures. Yeah, yeah. Because so, like this is a club that they expect to win the Champions League quarter final every season at the bare minimum. Mm-hmm. But I I do believe, and we will get onto this later on, that this squad does have the capabilities. But in terms of winning the league title, it's gonna be tough, right? Because Real Madrid is still there and they've done some really nice business themselves with mm-hmm. the winning Rudiga, Tremaini. It's not the flashiest signings like Barcelona, but they you feel like apart yeah, from they did the job. Benzema, they've got they've got some job done. Yeah. I, I don't think Real Madrid need well, you could say that if they have some injuries at the back, there might be problems because they let Marcelo and Gutierrez go and while they have a good number of people that can play left backs, left back, it's a long season. I feel with Real Madrid, it's like the one Benzema injury, which is which I don't wish on him, and is very is very unlikely from showing some weaknesses. So they do need to get a proper center forward, so they don't like 
change their gameplay completely when Benzema is not there. Other than that, I think they are good to go. Yeah, I'll say one weakness from my point of view for Real Madrid is the right side of the attack. Because I feel right now Fede Valverde plays on that side when they're playing a, like the Gala 11. Mm-hmm. And while he does bring a lot of hard work defensively, I just feel going forward, when you're facing that front three, they're less of a threat on the right side. Yeah, but they still get the job done, no matter how you put it. So. <laughs> yeah, that, that's just Real Madrid for you. Yeah, but, but with them, it's it's interesting. What do you think will be the evolution of the squad for Real Madrid this season? Because they brought in a lot of young, talented midfielders in the re- in recent seasons with Kamavinda, with Tromani. Do you think this season is where we we'll see that transition from K- KCM, as they're called, yeah. to Kamavinda, Tromani, and Valverde? No. <laughs> no? <laughs> and Angelotti loves them too much. But yeah. I think if it's going to happen, it's probably going to happen now that you have three very good backups to KCM. Yeah. And I feel like out of all of them, you could say, based on last season performances, you could say Cruz is the likely one that may lose his place. But it's all up to Kamavinga, Tramani, and Valverde to show, to make themselves completely undroppable. Yeah, and I believe Cruz has not renewed his contract, so that will be interesting. Yeah, that will be interesting. Yeah. But then again, remember how Valverde started the first eight or nine games of last season because Cruz was injured for all of them. Yeah. And then once Cruz came back, he stopped playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, part of it was down to him getting injured, but you get my point. If he played well in those eight games and still couldn't maintain midfield, so yeah, with Ancelotti. It's not going to happen this season. <laughs> Valverde is an interesting player because he's such a good player, despite the fact that, like, you look at his statistics. And if you're not someone who watches La Liga or Real Madrid, you're just like, how is this guy getting a game for Real Madrid? Because it's like he it doesn't score goals, he doesn't assist enough. But you see, he keeps playing. it in the crossbar. Though. Yeah, he keeps it in the crossbar. <laughs> like, yes, some like, brilliant, brilliant shots. Yeah. Yeah. It's and... a, a problem. Man. Anytime we play against, Real Madrid and Valverde is playing. I'm always on edge. I'm like, this guy, <laughs> this guy's a problem. <laughs> yeah. And talk about Tony Rüdiger for a few moments. So how is he going to improve Real Madrid's back line? Let's see. The thing is that if you are to pick a Real Madrid player that will drop out of the back line, for me, it would be Militao because for, the, for a good part of 2022, Militao has been shaky and <laughs> I don't want to say he's been a disaster at the back sometimes because that's too harsh for Real Madrid player but it's just like out of all of them he's the most likely that would lose his place if Carlo sticks with a back four but then again Antonio Rudiger to my absolute shock played a lot a lot of preseason at left back so who even knows anymore with that man I don't know, maybe it's Mendido in this place. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. true. Yeah, speaking of co- unconventional lineups, like, have you seen Vitzel for Athletic Madrid? He's playing as center back recently. Well, given that they only have two good center backs and two headless chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry yeah. to hear this, but I'm. I'm not lying, am I? <laughs> no, no, you aren't. You aren't. But, but it's all so far. I know it's, it's just preseason, but they had yeah. the game, the game to get against Juventus. Alvaro Morata. Morata. Scored the Morata Derby. Yeah. <laughs> of course, he's, he wants... He, Juve won team. He scores three goals. Is that really a coincidence? <laughs> no, <not laughs> Maybe he's showing them what they're missing. <laughs> yeah, but if you're a classic, you keep him. <sighs> I'll keep him if I can't find a, 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 an obvious upgrade at this point. Yeah, there are rumors that it could be Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> that, that's not good. The, the athletic fans will not let that happen. Yeah, they'll, they'll predict him. Like, once he starts scoring the goal, like, if they could. Yeah. The thing is, I, I don't get this with athletic fans, right? A lot of <laughs> the people who they hold up as legends, they played for Real Madrid in their past, right? With Ryan yeah. Frank, with Felipe, with Llorente. Llorente, right, right now. <laughs> So, <laughs> I, I think, yo, if, if it gets, no, it's just that Ronaldo, Ronaldo and 
Atletico, it's, I feel like he hates Atletico fans more than he hates Barcelona fans. <laughs> Atletico fans hate him more than Barcelona fans hate him. Because what he against when Ronaldo was playing against us, it was mostly us that like edged the battles against his Real Madrid. But with Atleti, it was more in his favor. So there's more hatred there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, to be honest. If Ronaldo was to join Atleti, he'd be an upgrade on Suarez was last season. Yeah. Do, That's just the truth. I kind of version of Suarez because you look at Suarez a lot last season. And he couldn't run. Passes me. Yeah, can he just couldn't run. His legs were gone. Yeah. Can at least Ronaldo will run for that? Like, I'm not sure how it would fit in terms of attitude with Simeone, but, but besides mm-hmm. Ronaldo, let's talk about players that are, are there. They've made decent signings. Like, we already mentioned Bitzel, but they've most of all, got a replacement for the right back spot with now finally, and that yeah, is just, yeah. yeah, that's that'll be good because he's going to allow your empty to play in midfield more and get a lot of continuity. Because last season, even when Trippier was there, Trippier was in the outer team, so your empty had to fill in at right wing back or right back a lot, and that affected his continuity, I guess. So you know, having him in his best position will only be a good thing for Atleti. And gun to your head, out of the three, who's going to win La Liga? Mm. Yeah. If we register up there, I guess us. <laughs> I, know, I, I, I mean, I, I mean, I've written down my predictions. I predicted Real Madrid. I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> Yeah, remember just first, who's second? Um, us, but the two of them are very close. Yeah. And then third. <laughs> third is a surprise. Oh. I've gone with Villarreal. Oh wow, 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 wow. That that, that we'll, we'll we'll get we'll get onto we'll that. We'll get there. Don't call me crazy yet. I, there's a method to my badness. Yeah, they they have been very good in preseason, so we'll get on to them. Like for for me myself, I think honestly, I think athletic can be any worse than they were last season. So I do think that it'll be a risk between the three. True, true, true. But I can see Barca just edging it because I don't think, honestly, I don't think there's that much difference between the three in general in the last like three or four seasons, right? And I just feel sure. Barca, they've, brought some new, they've got some new signings that are taking them to another level. <laughs> While Madrid and Atleti, they've signed players that they need, but they've more or less stayed at a similar yeah, so- level. Yeah, but but you, then Real Madrid's level last season was quite a bit higher than everyone else's. Yeah, so yeah, it was. Yeah. That's why, unless Atleti do something spectacular. But you know, it's in, this is the kind of situation they like when they're the underdogs. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but the thing, going back to Atleti, right? Against mm-hmm. teams that weren't in the bottom, like, six or seven, they had a similar record with Real Madrid and Barcelona, right? But they mm-hmm. failed a lot against the relegation level teams and I think yeah. that's a difference in attitude because if they can get that attitude, and this is a maybe maybe they're on the same level with the other two because mm-hmm. they won the league let's not forget two seasons ago yeah and when you're a team like Atleti I feel winning the league takes it get, it gives you an emotional high yeah and it makes you feel yeah. overconfidence going into the second season true compared true, true. to Madrid and Barca who are used to winning the league titles mm-hmm. and they're thinking we have to win the next one. But if you're at let's see, winning one league title is like a miracle. Christmas. So, yeah. So you have to like, you over celebrate and you forget the work yeah. that you did to get to that level. Yeah. Sorry, Athletic fans for that. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like they need someone to drop Suarez level numbers for that to happen. And among you everyone, they have. <laughs> you always got a hat trick today, man. It, it's. That hat trick isn't going to count for anything. <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> easy. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I hope Atleti, like, I, I want to see a very strong title race with as yeah. many teams involved as possible. So I yeah. hope they can make it a season that we don't forget. But ultimately, yeah. I hope they, they are Real Madrid and everyone else lose. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let, let's, let's move on. The top four chase, right? Because you made a big prediction that Villarreal will be third. So... That means that you think Sevilla, or are you saying Atleti will get top four? No, no, no. Atleti are getting top four. <laughs> I'm not, Atleti will get top four. I feel, because like you said, I find it 
hard to imagine there'll be any worse than they were this year. But um, yeah, for VRL, I, I predict, actually I predict that VR might even be seventh if things go back. <laughs> oh, interesting. I, I yeah, 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 like, I, I, I'm like, okay, here's the thing. Sevilla, as it stands now, have a center back partnership of Goodell and Marcao. Marcao <laughs> wasn't played in La Liga before, or worst case scenario. Rekic <laughs> and Fernando. I, yeah. They sign, they just signed Isco today. And while that's a great sign, I was like, they have so many midfielders that they need to get rid of. Yeah. And maybe would they even I mean I guess they should be able to register new signings now. No, yeah, I, I think they will they will be able to register. Like with Isco, right? I feel he gives them something that they've missed since they've had Eva Banega, that True. sort of material midfielder who can play D, who can like connect the plays together. They've mm -hmm. really missed that since Banega left because Rakitic isn't that player. Yeah, Rakitic isn't that kind of player. And I guess Worst case scenario, Fernando moves back to defense, moves to center back, and maybe Rakitic or Delaney or Jordan is the um, holding midfielder. But I do feel like if Sevilla don't adequately replace Kunde and Carlos, then they need to rethink how they play football. Because yeah. if they play the same way, they are not going to finish short. No, no, because last season they were just too conservative. They were just. Yeah. They were like they were hard to watch last season, if we're being honest. At times they were hard to watch, yeah. But I, I do get your point because like yeah. the strength of Sevilla in the last three seasons has been having a strong back line. Yeah. There are rumors that they're going to get um Marcao's partner from Galatasaray, I believe his name is Nil Vic Nielsen. Nielsen. You but Marcel played Galatasaray. What do you Yeah, think? we played so I know of them. Uh uh, I don't really remember. The, the only thing I remember from that game at that point was that Pedri sat two people down, and I think it was the two of them. <laughs> but, but to be fair, Pedri sat Diego Carlos down. Yeah, you, but, yeah, so, yeah. But, but I, the, the thing is that Ga, if you look at Galatasaray's season as a whole, which I found very interesting, they struggled for a lot of the season, and then their second half of the season was better. I think they ended up finishing like mid table, so I'm I don't really know yeah. about these signings. But then again, we have to remember the principal team with Munch. He signs ordinary players and makes them stars that big clubs want to buy soon. Yeah, yeah. Because if you look at Kundi and Carlos, right? We're praising mm -hmm. them right now, but like Kundi and Carlos came from mid table French teams. Yeah. Carlos has been at Nantes. Nantes, they've gotten better, obviously. And Kundi was playing at Bordeaux, who are in the third division right now. DC administrative yeah. reason. So mm -hmm. yeah, so you never know. But I do get your point because the competition is going to be hot this season because like Villarreal, if if we get to them, they've had an impressive preseason. They've kept more mm -hmm. or less the same block of players. They brought in El Comandante and they might bring in Edson Cavani. And Los Celso may come back. Also, yeah, yeah. That that looks like a good team. And you have to think about the fact that. They're not going to be playing in Champions League football. They're going to be playing Conference League football, which, with all due respect to teams in Conference League, is a different, it's a much easier level. They can yeah. rest and rotate players and they can focus yeah. on the league. Yeah. And that would make, I believe, they're the fourth best team in the league at the moment, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree too. And I believe playing in the weaker competition would allow them to focus the on the league more. They're the fourth best team in the league. Yeah. Hmm. Also, if I also believe that just without anything else being added or subtracted, if they keep Jared fit, that should be enough to fire them to fourth place at least. Yeah, and, and there's still Dan Juma who's there. There's still Dan Juma is very good. Yeah, Pino is Pino has been had the Pino has had a very good preseason. Bayana is Chukwe awesome. Yeah, yeah Bayana is there, Chukwesia is there, Nicholas Jackson looks really promising. Yeah. So, yeah. That's good. And and even if Dan Juma is sold. They might get Uma Sadik from Amaria, which seems like a very good deal for them. So yeah. all things look good for Villarreal. But what about Real Sociedad? They've gotten in Alicho, Kubo. It looks exciting, though. Yeah, it looks exciting. But the thing is that you can't help but feel that 
regardless of how well Porto and Yanuza did last year, I uh, saw a lot. You can't help but feel that real sisters have gotten a little bit weaker. Yeah. In attack. Now, here's the thing with them. Their defense was very, very good last year. The issue, they're not like Sevilla who were playing conservatively on purpose. They were actually trying to play enterprising football, but Isa and Sola couldn't score to save their lives. Yeah. So if that's part of, if they can get, if someone can step up and be a consistent goal scorer, this is real sister can definitely get into the fourth place. Yeah. You know, but if they, if they like, keep things very good at the back, the issue is that I don't see that happening because I don't think their squad as it is is good enough to fight in three competitions. And say they go deep into the Europa League, I feel it's going to affect their league performance. Yeah, I'll, I'll share the same sentiment because that's the problem with Rafa Sudan. And I feel that's why they've been lim- in a limbo as a, this Europa League team because hmm. they've never had a big squad that could fight for everything. They've always yeah. had a squad that were good enough to have an okay season. Yeah. But we say okay season, but Russia said they're not a team historically that always finishes in the top six. So yeah, this is a this is like a great period for them. Yeah, but for Betis as well. Yeah, You're but about once it, yeah, I want to tell Russia said back to my predictions I made before coming yeah. here. If you are to ask me which team is going to drop out of the top seven, I'd say them. You say Russia said that interesting. Yeah, yeah. interesting. I was I'm, I was gonna go with Betis myself to be honest. Oh really? Let's yeah. see what you have to say about Betis. No, like I think with Betis is that I, I don't know. It's I just feel like they they are a good team. They are enterprising and everything. Mm-hmm. I just feel maybe this is a season where they hit that impasse because they've won the cup, similar to Atletico Madrid winning the league um, in 2021. Mm-hmm. And maybe that gets to their head a bit. They have made some interesting signings. They've lost Teo, who I think was a reliable winger going going forward for them and a reliable mm-hmm. squad player. They brought in Luis Enrique, and I'm not sure how well he's going to do. I do think Luis Felipe is a brilliant signing. But yeah, I, I agree with that too. With Betis, there's still there's still questions about the final comp- configuration of their squad. Alex Moreno might go to Nottingham Forest, so. I, I still think there are lots of questions about that. Yeah. I, I, yeah, the Alex Marino team really puts a screw into my um, predictions for them, but because he was really, really good last year. Yeah, he was, he was awesome last yeah. year. Yeah. Carvalho, who was also really good, might go and we'll see how that affects them. Yeah. But, but I do think that, as like, if one me, but Iglesias and everyone else maintain their level up front, that should be enough to secure a Europa League spot. Oh, yeah, and there, there's but, a rumor that a while mm-hmm. might come to Betis. Yeah, I guess like selling Moreno is part of, like part of Moreno money is going to go to uh, towards our war and everything. Yeah. So yeah, the thing is that for real Betis to break into top four, I think their squad who do it is just the mentality has to change. Like they need to like make the Bia Marine a fortress against other top four contenders. Because if you're to do a league table of the top seven teams against each other, I'm pretty sure they'll be last. Yeah, because I think they lost both games to Via Real. They only beat surprise, surprise Barcelona. <laughs> against Sevilla. I believe they lost both games against Atletico Madrid. They yeah. got a tie against Real Madrid, but that was at the end of the season one. I think. Yeah. So, they did beat Real Sociedad, to be honest. Yeah, for, for <laughs> pretty sure. heavily for in the cup and in the league. <laughs> yeah. yeah but... but I think, and... I think point. they need to improve in those games against Sevilla, Atleti, Barca, Madrid. They need to improve, to take one more step. Yeah, if particularly is the games against Sevilla because Sevilla are the closest person they can catch right now. Yeah. So they don't need to necessarily beat Atleti or beat um, Barcelona and Real Madrid unless they find themselves really, really close to them for some reason yeah. and they're competing for the same team. Yeah, yeah. But, but the reason why I say that is that, for example, if you beat a team like Madrid or you beat a team like Barca or Atleti and you're in a situation where Betis are, it gives your squad 
that belief, that sense of belief that yes, we can go on to do it because we're beating these top teams, right? Yeah. And I guess beating Sevilla is the most important thing because not only are they a rival for a top four finish, but they're also a city rival. And I can't remember the last time Betis really got two consecutive wins against Sevilla in the league season. Well, yeah, Sevilla, been... this happens on an annual basis, it seems. Yeah. Yeah, so that really is the team that has to change for Betis. As for their squad, I think their squad at the end of the window is going to be okay to yeah. complete for a Europa League spot unless they lose someone like Fekir or Canales. Which it seems like they're both going to stay. Let's, yeah, so let's talk about teams that could replace, like if Villarreal or Real Sociedad, let's even, even Sevilla or Betis falls out of the top seven, which We've had like pretty much the same top seven for the last two seasons, so it's low probability. But who do you think replaces them? Salta is a good candidate, Espanol, Atlete, maybe even Atafe. My prediction is Athletic Club, because, okay. yeah, here's why. Say Valverde is able to actually drill goals into his forwards somehow. <laughs> Like all the gray hair he has accumulated over preseason is worth something. Yeah. <laughs> and they and they maintain the defensive solidity more or less. Then I feel they can push for seventh at least. Because yeah. with, despite all their problems in the goal scoring department last year, they almost got seventh. Sure. That, that is so, true. Yeah. I feel like well, I feel like one of the se- I feel like they will get seventh or so. Based on just by the virtue of the fact that Real Sociedad and Sevilla have gotten quite weak as of now compared to last season, and we don't know what's going to happen with all the um, various parameters that you have to factor in this season. Yeah, so I think out of everyone, Athletic are the best placed. Yeah, but if you need to do something like you need a special intervention for Iñaki Williams because that guy, my God, <laughs> yeah. Like whenever I see him one on one on goal, I fancy the goalkeeper. And that's just... <laughs> yeah, I mean maybe this could be the year of the Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah, because he didn't start last season because he was injured, but he looks promising enough. They just need if they can just get maybe every forward to up their goal tally by four to five goals. That can be that can go a long way. Yeah, I can. I can. I'm, I'm super excited to see if that's going under Valverde because yeah. I think under Marcelino, they're a bit like they're a bit too much like Sevilla and Atletico. Yeah. Be, or I wouldn't even say that because like they didn't, they weren't too conservative, but it's just they just couldn't attack. At yeah. They yeah. they had a lot of intensity, but then the intensity was kind of it was it was like it wasn't channeled in the right way. Yeah. What about Espanol? With Diego Martinez, new manager, yeah. new feeling. Possibly yeah, I have, I have a Spaniel in ninth if they keep RDT. Yeah, that, that's a big question. He might yeah. be, he's rumored to go to Real Madrid. I wouldn't say yes. Yeah, so. oh. This guy's playing for all the clubs I despise. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, if he stays, he, I can see he and Hustle being able to play together because Martinez loves 4 4 2. Like every other manager in this league. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Espanol have made really, really, really good signings. They've got a good goalkeeper to replace um, Diego Lopez in La Comte. They, ha- they signed yeah, Vilhena back. Comte finally playing La Liga after. <laughs> yeah, finally. <laughs> in yeah. He'll, um, he'll, they also have, um, they, they also bought Vincia Souza. They got, Vilhena back. They got someone else. I can't really remember. A defender, right? Yeah, yeah. They got. I, I believe it's Mallorca's left back. I forget his name. His name. Is... Ah, yeah, yeah. Brian Olivan. Olivan, yes, yes. Yeah. And so he can compete with Pedrosa there, or if they sell Pedrosa, I believe he's and he's able enough to play there. But the biggest signing for Espanol is Diego Martinez himself, because. Given his feats with Granada, like it could be a special season for Espanol. Would they finally beat Barcelona? <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, um, hell will freeze over first. 
<laughs> but yeah. who knows? This is their best chance. Yeah, last year was his best chance when Barcelona had De Jong and stuff. Yeah. And De Jong sure. scores the last minute goal. Yeah, if Espanyol played against us when we had to play De Jong, Jutla, Ilias, and Abdi every bloody game, then they would yeah. have beaten us. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like Diego Martinez has our number usually. So I feel like that's why, how, why they're going to beat us this season. Yeah. And speaking of good transfer windows, Getafe, they, they've had an amazing transfer mm-hmm. window. With, with the, arguably the best. Yeah. Like, like it's like a friend of mine described them as the Barca of mid table clubs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Barca of the mid table guys. Yeah. Getafe should be able to stay up comfortably with this squad because when adding to Unal, they've gotten Bomayoral back, who was very good for them. They've gotten Porto, who I believe his style will be more suited to Getafe than Real Sociedad. They got a real bargain in Domingos Duarte yeah. and Molly and um, what's his name again? <laughs> Sorry. I got an engineer from yeah, they got Angeleri. I'm trying to remember the midfielder. Luis Mia. Yeah, Luis Mia. Very, I was like, his name starts with MBG Molina. Yeah, Luis yeah. Mia. Yeah. And then they are also linked with one of my favorite wingers, Jorge De Frutos. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, if they can get him, man. If they get him, I'm going to move them into a top half finish, to be honest. That looks like a team that could finish, like, even seventh, you know, if the stars line. I think seven will be too much for them, but right. but I believe top half for sure. They could be like the new Osasuna, who are always in the top half. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about Salta Vigo because they brought in Luis Campos. The team looks different, very different. I'm yeah. excited to see how this will end up. It could either be really good or it could fail. Yeah, it's going to be either really good or really bad, but. I don't think it will be bad enough that they'll find themselves in relegation trouble. Yeah, and it even looks... Everyone. Yeah, yeah, it looks better now because yeah. they've added another striker in Paciencia. So, Aspas won't be lonely up top. Like, do, do we think, given the fact that Luis Campos has this big reputation as finding talent and building teams, is this something that we should get excited about? Yes. We should get excited about it, especially as Kude is the manager. And we know Kude Ball is the shining light in the <laughs> league of 4 4 2. Yeah, right. like, like, but, but to be honest, I, I feel that 4 4 2 madness, the terrorismo ball might disappear this season because a lot of the terrorismo manager have gone. Have, have gone. The, like, we are left with just Simeone and Lopez, I guess, or terrorismo managers, which isn't bad. Yes. <laughs> so. That, uh, that, that's why I hope that we can get some exciting seasons from different teams. And Celta are one of those teams that will excite you that way. Yeah, I am excited to see how this point could go because it could go really get shaped very quickly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because I, I don't know what to expect from them, to be honest. Because it's like it's it's so new, it's so it, it's it's definitely interesting to see. Yeah. Because we don't know what's going to happen to Dennis Bryce Mendes has left. Yeah. They've added Oscar, Svedberg, um, Paciencia, as I mentioned. Common. Yeah. Una mm-hmm. Nunez is, um, they also added Una Nunez to the backline that really needed reinforcing. Yeah. <laughs> and there's Lucas de Torre, who is. Yeah, player. Lucas de Torre is also there, he's a, he's a youngster. It all looks pretty exciting, to be honest. I'm interested to see, especially how Oscar Rodriguez does. Yeah, he was something special at, at Leganes, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah, and he hasn't gotten any sort of continuity in any team since that season. So hopefully he can make Celta his own team. Do you want to hear a funny story about Oscar? Yeah. So two seasons ago, Lega and Celta Vigo, they were fighting to stay up. Oscar Rodriguez has the last minute shot to save Lega against Real Madrid, and he misses. It's just ironic that now it's playing for a self <laughs> after that mess. Oh, yeah, true, true. <laughs> yeah. And then it's also ironic that if he hadn't missed, Celta Vigo would have been the one in the second division. Second division. 
<laughs> yeah, and let's move on to like the teams who we believe are mid table who aren't going to do much. Like Osasuna comes to mind. Okay, I, Osasuna I, have made really good signings, to be honest. But do you, like, do you have the like the signings to go beyond that 11 12 purgatory that they're always in? No, I don't think they have the signings. But we never know how this season is going to go. But as of now, I think that their place as a as a 10th, 9th, 11th best team in the league is pretty much secured. Yeah. But for the rest of the league, though, I, I'll say after we've got after all the teams we mentioned, mm-hmm. every other team is in a relegation battle. <laughs> every other team. Valencia? Oh shit, we haven't mentioned Valencia. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I would call them a relegation battle too if the season goes pear straight because with Valencia, Puertas is gone. Yeah. Marcus Andre might leave. Maxi Gomez might leave. Gatsuso is another manager who's we don't know what we're gonna get from. Yeah, we don't, <laughs> absolutely don't know. So the team has gotten worse. <laughs> <laughs> and the team last season, it was it was it was, it was bad. So I would say, I would say in somewhat Valencia, they could be dragged into the relegation battle if things don't pick up pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I like the signing of Castile- Castillejo and Samuel Lino. So. Yeah, I, I've heard good reports from Lino. Yeah, if, and I do believe that Valencia will probably, after Geddes has gone, Valencia will get busy in trying to bring some more people in. Yeah. Maybe so, on loans or whatever. So for them, I, I still doubt they'll be in the relegation belt because there are more teams that are in bad in worse shape than them. Then so just mid-table mediocrity again. Yeah, I guess unless you go do <laughs> turns into Lewandowski. Yo, he's he's been scoring amazing. Yeah, he's been yeah, they're go- he's going to be. I feel like now that he's going to be the main man up top, we can really see him come into his own and shine and Get maybe see if you can break reach double figures and, and everything. And so they're staying at least. So that guy staying is still good. Yeah. No matter how you look at it. Yeah. And like, like I feel them and Celta have Valencia and Celta have the most question marks about them. Yeah. In terms of teams like who can either go like really well mm-hmm. or really poorly. Yeah. You know this beauty of all this. All of the things we've mentioned so far, I have them in my let me see, top 13. So I'm going to assume from 13 and up, you're pretty much not going to be involved in relegation, but <laughs> sure. pending a disastrous season. Yeah, yeah. And we have Rayo, Mallorca, who you have mentioned, Cadiz. Mm-hmm. They were they all struggled last season to stay up. And LJ too, they all struggled last season to stay up. Mm-hmm. Like, do you see any of those teams like going down? Or do you see all of them going down? Not of all of them, I'll say. Mallorca's business, besides bringing back Mariki, who I think will help, it hasn't really impressed me. So yeah, I, I think Mallorca will go down. I also think Cardis, Cardis may go down. I don't know. I don't know if it's bias or just logic here. Maybe <laughs> it's a bit of both, but yeah, I do feel. Cardis haven't really made any sign that has made them stronger in last season. And though Sergio is a capable manager, capable of keeping teams up, I'm not too sure about them. Yeah. So for now, I have Cardis. Cardis bottom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my my also in there. And then I believe that... What's the other one? Elche. Okay, yeah. Elche. I would have had Elche in my bottom three too, but they signed Roger Marti, so that should be enough. He plus Boya and everyone else should be enough to keep Elche mm-hmm. up because Elche were a pretty strong team during the Francisco period. And do you see Rayo also going down, or do you think it's one of the new league promoted teams that will go down? Uh, I think Rayo, Rayo will be safe too because oh. I, I, I would have said they'd be in a serious relegation battle if they continue their downward trend in the second half of the season. But thankfully for them, they were able to arrest it and end the season somewhat okay. 
So I don't know. To this Miami United when we played, I, I guess it was a Miami United reserve team, but like they were they were okay. And yeah. you might see a strike force of Diego Costa, Camello, and Falcao, which is like yeah. let's come into future past patience. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's um going to be interesting with Ray, honestly. I think right, I believe Ray also got Salvi Sanchez from Cadiz. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, so that's good like competition there. So I think all in all, Ryu should be able to stay up. Yeah, Rice love the senior. The yeah. king. <laughs> and then yeah. they're going to the recently promoted teams. Mm-hmm. So we have Almeria who won the league. Mm-hmm. We have Valladolid who finished second and Girona who surprised everyone and they didn't bottle promotion for once. <laughs> yeah. So who do you think would do the best out of all the three? I'm going to go with Real Valladolid. Oh, interesting. Not Almeria. Almeria have the potential to be the best and the worst out of the three of them. Yeah. <laughs> Almeria, like, the three teams that have the biggest question marks for me in this league are Almeria, Celta, and Valencia. Yeah. Almeria have taken a really bold strategy, sending lots of youngsters. A lot of their players that you're sending have been youngsters and people that are, like, Improving at top level. So it's going to be interesting to see how they do. It can go really well and they are like, it's surprising, fresh addition, but it can go bad. And if they lose Sadiq, they're definitely probably going to go down. So yeah, I, I really like the strategy though. Like, I feel it's something that we haven't seen in La Liga to have a team that's that could, that has the potential to be like an Ajax or an Al- yeah. or a Salzburg. Yeah. Given the young players that they have and they can possibly they'll possibly get to sell them for huge sums of money. Yeah. I, and I just love the fact that their scouting department is amazing. Given how they found Sadik, they found Darwin Nunez, who's at Liverpool right now. Hmm. Yeah. And then as for Girona and Real Valdez, I feel like their transfer business has been better and has been more it's more you can definitely say how it's going to be. As with uh, well, as against Almeria, where you just don't know if it's going to be good or bad. Yeah, Girona, I believe that a lot will ride on Stuani, but I also believe that um, Tati Castellanos will be a good addition to them. They've also made like good signings, bringing Yankuto back, that Yankel Lopez Herrera came in back as well. Yangel uh, Herrera is back but- in La Liga on his third consecutive loan. <laughs> or is it Fort? Fort, yeah. I think it was Fort. But do you know who I think Girona's best signing would be? Sure. Rodrigo Raquelme. Like, I saw highlights of this guy playing Sabine there, and I'm like, this guy is out of this world. Like, if Atletico sold Lamar, I would have, I would have thought that they would put him in the squad because he was, he was street side of the entire league last season. So I'm interested to see how he does in La Liga, where he can make that step up because he was generally brilliant in Southern Yeah. And Jordan might even get Abdi. Ooh, so, nice. I love Abdi. Yeah, so, yeah, I believe that Abdi should go to it or got club to further develop his because he needs he's he's very talented, he's just too raw right now. So he needs La Liga experience on a consistent enough basis. Yeah, and then true. for real Valladolid, I believe that their players that did so well for them last season should be able to replicate it in the in the premier under Pacheta. Yeah, I'm interested to see how Plata will do because he's yeah. a very exciting winger. So mm-hmm. I'm interested to see whether he can move that step up to yeah. top flight football. So yes. I'm going to ask you a quick, quick fire questions. Mm-hmm. Give me to drop your prediction. So already done. Who's going to win the league? The three you believe are going to go down. I just have a quick question on who do you think is going to be the top scorer? Is it going to be Benzema again? Or do you think the one Disney can still a march on <laughs> Disney. Uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully Disney wins it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's funny because it's going to be playing in like La Liga is broadcasted by ESPN, which is owned by the Disney Channel. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I, I hope. I think once Disney gets a once Disney gets firing, he's not going to stop. So yeah, hopefully. 
would agree with you because I feel like Lewandowski is the kind of guy who truly cares about this stuff. So Benzema think... does, doesn't seem like he's too bothered. He just happened to win it last year because all of the aliens used to compete against have gone. <laughs> God, yeah. So I can see I can see Lewandowski just scoring like four or five against Elche. <laughs> just <laughs> out of stats. Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe the Elche man or the Rio man. Yeah. I, I feel like if Barcelona had to have a good team, that the one that the team that's more likely to start part, and that would favor Lewis. And who do you think is going to be the revelation team, player, and manager? Revelation team. If Atafe gets the fruitos, they'll be the revelation team. The revelation player. This one is pretty hard. I'll say Joe Felix is going to have a really, really good season. Whether or not Atleti improve is irrelevant. He, I do believe that he himself is going to improve and take his game to another level. Yeah, he's been hitting the weights as, as well, man. Have you seen yeah. some pictures of his muscles now? Yeah, yeah. yeah I've wow. been seeing them, but I, do, I think like with more, when you play more football and do more cardio, it's going to go down. But still, I, it's he's still going to be stronger than he was. And then Revelation Manager is going to be, um, Revelation Manager will be um, Diego Martins. Diego Martins. Or Valverde. Oh, I'll say my Revelation team, I'm going to go for Maria. I'm going to be very bold with this. I'm just going to bet that their strategy will work and it'll be genuinely exciting to watch. The player, you already mentioned Joe Felix, which I wanted to mention, but I'll go with Usmani Dembele. I do believe he did. He had an amazing second half of the season. I, I can just see him taking that one extra level for this season and scoring a lot of goals and having a season similar to what Vinicius Junior had in the previous season. For the manager, well, wow, that's tough. But you know what? Oh, man, maybe I'll give it to maybe I'll give it to Gattuso. And I'll be I'll be brave, and things won't be as disastrous as Valencia, and they actually turn out all great. <laughs> this will come back to us in the future. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, hopefully Gattuso does well. Yeah. And yeah, but we just have to see. I I do feel that without Peter Lim and Valencia's management, is that he's not going to be given enough time. No. Even though the situation is really not that good. No, he's by drink kids, right? So yeah. Yeah. And let's talk a bit about what's going on in the rest of Europe. Let's start in the Bundesliga. Bayern clearly did, doesn't miss Levin Disney. <laughs> yeah, they don't. Is doing doing okay. Yeah. yeah. Bayern absolutely trashed the Europa League winners, Frankfurt, and they started really well. I don't think they're going to stop. Dortmund also won as well. Yeah, it was going to be interesting. My, my brother scored. Wasn't it, Royce? They, they took it off. But I, I, I <laughs> off. <laughs> okay. And then in the Premier League, Manchester City won. Holland scored. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's talk about Holland just for a quick moment, right? Because after he, after he had that game against the Republic of Shield, people were like, oh, He's not in the Bundesliga anymore. He's the white Lukaku. And... It's, a, it's typical children on Twitter. They've shut up so quickly now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but no then got up to a tough start, didn't they? Yeah, yeah they drew against Fulham, who is usually everyone's favorite to go down. <laughs> Chelsea and Tottenham got good results. Arsenal as well. And then that leaves my United, who <laughs> and my United. <laughs> Lost again. It seems like it's going to be another season where they disappoint. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt and say maybe De Jong will join them, but <laughs> I don't get why I don't get why you signed Lissandra and make him play center back when he's, a, when he's the defensive midfielder. You probably need to balance your team out. Yeah. But that's just me. <laughs> and let's let's go to League, League One, on. where your boy Messi and Neymar, my God, they've been. Uh, Pochettino Pajet, made us think that they were done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Neymar's been amazing, man. Yeah. Messi's got a really good goal 
Nemo also scored a really good goal the week before when they won the committee the um Cup de France. Yeah, Frank yeah. Frank Super Cup, yeah. That free kick was awesome, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. Can anyone, what do you see? Like, I know it's the season just started, right? But if Neymar and Messi continue playing the way they're playing and Mbappe comes back, could this be PSG's year in the Champions League? No. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And just a, just a quick question to finish it off. Like, mm -hmm. Bayern, City, and PSG, they all won their leagues. Mm -hmm. Does anyone stop them? Uh, I believe it's all true when their leagues. Okay. Win their leagues. And with that, I just want to thank you again for coming to the podcast, for giving your insights as well. And it's been nice having you to chat with you. And hopefully when La Liga starts, we'll have the same fireworks. Yeah, same. Uh, it's been nice. It's nice to be back. Yeah. And for the rest of you guys, enjoy your soccer this week. And adios. Uh, adios.